The Third Testament, Section 5. Chapter 20, Mary, The Maternal Love of God. The Earthly Existence of Mary in Humility. 1. Mary is the flower of my heavenly garden, whose being has always been in my spirit. 2. Do you see these flowers here, which hide their beauty in humility? Likewise, Mary was and is, an inexhaustible fountain of beauty for those who are able to see her in purity and reverence, and a treasure of goodness and tenderness for all beings. 3. Mary went through the world and hid her divine being, she knew who she was and who her son was, but instead of boasting of that grace, she declared herself only a servant of the Most High, an instrument of the Lord's counsel. 8, 42-43, 46. 4. Mary knew that she would conceive a more powerful and greater king than all the kings of the earth. But is that why she crowned herself queen among men? Did her lips proclaim in squares, streets, simple huts or palaces that she would become the mother of the Messiah, that the native son of the father would come forth from her womb? 5. Certainly not, my people, the greatest humility, meekness, and grace was in her, and the promise was fulfilled. Her heart of a human mother was made happy, and even before she gave birth, at that time and afterwards throughout the life of the son, she was a most loving mother, who knew spiritually the destiny of Jesus, the mission he had to fulfill among men, and what he had come for. She never opposed this destiny, for she had a part in the same work. 6. When she sometimes shed tears, it was a weeping of the human mother, it was the body nature that felt the pain in the son, her own flesh. 7. But was she a disciple of the master, her son? No. Mary did not need to learn anything from Jesus. She was in the father self and had incarnated only to fulfill that beautiful and difficult task. 8. Was that excellent mother's heart limited to loving only her most beloved son? Certainly not, through that small human heart the motherly heart revealed itself in consolation and sublime words, in advice and beneficence, in miracles, in light and in truth. 9. She never put herself on display, never misunderstood the word of the master. But just as she was at the feet of the manger that served as her cradle, so she was at the feet of the cross, on which the Son, the Master, the Father of all creation died and took his last breath as man. 10. Thus she fulfilled her destiny as a human mother and set a sublime example to all mothers and to all men. 360, 28-31 Mary and Jesus. 11. Many times people have wondered why Jesus, even after he was crucified, let himself be seen by the sinner Magdalene and then went to see his disciples, while no one knows that he visited his mother. Then I tell you that it was not necessary to make myself known to Mary in the same way as I did to her. For the connection between Christ and Mary has always existed, even before the world was. 12. Through Jesus I revealed myself to mankind to save sinners and I let myself be contemplated by them after the crucifixion to revive the faith of those who needed me. But truly, I tell you, Mary, as man my loving mother, did not need to wash herself from any stain, and she could not have any lack of faith at all, because she knew who Christ was, even before she offered her maternal womb to him. 13. It was not necessary to humanize my spirit to visit those who, 
with the same purity and gentleness with which she received me in her womb, gave me back to the kingdom from which I had come but who could know the way I spoke to her in her solitude and the divine caress with which my spirit surrounded her. 14. So I answer those who have asked me this question, because they often thought that the first visit of Jesus should have been to his mother. 15. How different the form in which I made myself known to Mary had to be from the one I used to make myself felt to Magdalene and my disciples, 30, 17 to 21. The Virginity of Mary. 16. On the top of the mountain where the Master is, there is also Mary, the Universal Mother the one who became woman in the second age so that the miracle of the incarnation of the divine word would become reality. 17. Man has often judged and searched Mary and also the way in which Jesus was born, and these judgments have torn the robe of purity of the maternal spirit, whose heart let his blood flow down on the world. 18. At this time I have removed the veils of the unknown to remove the doubt of the unbeliever and to give him knowledge of the spiritual teachings. 19. Men have made of my truth, which is like a way, many bypaths, where most of the time they go astray. While some seek the intercession of the Heavenly Mother, and others misjudge her, her mantle of love and tenderness covers them all eternally. 20. From the beginning of times I revealed the existence of the spiritual mother, of whom the prophets spoke even before she came into the world. 228, 1 to 5. 21. Mary was sent to reveal her virtue, her example and her perfect divinity. She was not a woman like all the others among men. She was a different kind of woman, and the world looked at her life, learned to know her way of thinking and feeling, knew about the purity and grace of her spirit and her body. 22. She is an example of simplicity, humility, selflessness and love. But although her life has been known to the world at that time and to the following generations, there are many who do not recognize her virtue, her virginity. They cannot explain the fact that she was a virgin and a mother at the same time. The reason for this is that man by nature is unbelieving and cannot judge the divine works with an awakened spirit. If he would study the scriptures and fathom the incarnation of Mary and the life of her ancestors, he would finally know who she is. 221, 3. 23. The most tender love of God for his creatures has no form. Nevertheless, in the second age she took on the form of a woman in Mary, the mother of Jesus. The figure of Mary known from the Marian apparitions is therefore to be regarded only as a spiritual revelation figure accepted for a short time. 24. Understand that Mary has always existed, since her essence, her love, her tenderness have always been in the Godhead. 25. How many theories and errors have men created about Mary? About her motherhood, her conception and her purity. How much they have blasphemed. 26. On the day when they really understand that purity, they will say to themselves, it would be better for us if we had never been born. Tears of fire will burn in their souls. Then Mary will envelop them in her grace, the Divine Mother will protect them with her mantle, and the Father will forgive them and say with infinite love, watch and pray, for I forgive you, and in you I forgive and bless the world. 171, 69 to 72. The example of Mary for women. 27. 
The life of your master is an example for all people. But since the woman lacked the teaching about her task as a mother, Mary was sent to her as the embodiment of the divine tenderness, who appeared as a woman among men to likewise give you her divine example of humility. 101, 58. 28. Blessed women, you also belong to my apostles. There is no difference between a man's spirit and yours, even if you are physically different and the tasks of both are different. 29. As the master of your spirit, take Jesus and follow him in the way which his love has marked out. Make his word your own and embrace his cross. 30. I speak to your spirit with the same word with which I speak to men, because you are spiritual alike. Nevertheless, if your female heart is looking for an example to follow, if you need perfect examples to support you in life, remember Mary, observe her throughout her life on earth. 31. It was the Father's will that Mary's humble life should be written down by my disciples, who knew her throughout her ministry and discussed with her. 32. That life, humble for those who knew it, was radiant in the world from its birth to its end. Mary wrote many pages of loving teaching with the humility of her spirit, with her infinite tenderness, with the purity of her heart with her love for humanity, which she expressed more with silence than with words, knowing that he who was to speak to men was Christ. 33. The Spirit of Mary was the maternal love itself, emanating from the Father, to give humanity the perfect example of humility, obedience and gentleness. Her walk through the world was a trail of light, her life was simple, majestic and pure. In her, the prophecies were fulfilled, which announced that the Messiah would be born of a virgin. 34. Only she had been able to carry the seed of God in her womb, only she was worthy to remain behind after the fulfillment of her task towards Jesus as the spiritual mother of mankind. 35. Therefore Mary is your perfect example, women. But turn to her and take her as your model in her silence, in her works of humility, of infinite self-denial out of love for the needy, in her silent pain, in her compassion that forgives all, and in her love that is intercession, consolation, and sweet assistance. 36. Virgins, Wives mothers, parentless girls or widows, lonely women who have a heart pervaded by pain, call Mary your loving and caring mother, call her in your thoughts, receive her in the spirit and feel her in your heart. 225, 46-54 Mary as advocate, comforter and cordemtrix of mankind. 37 Mary walked silently through the world, but she filled hearts with peace, interceded for the needy, prayed for all, and finally shed her tears of forgiveness and compassion for the ignorance and wickedness of men. Why should you not turn to Mary if you want to come to the Lord, since you have received Jesus through her? Were not mother and son united in the hour of the Saviour's death? Was not the blood of the son mixed with the tears of the mother at that moment? 8. 47. 38. I have bequeathed to the world from the cross the book of life and spiritual wisdom, a book that should be interpreted and understood by men through the centuries, ages and epochs. Therefore, I said to Mary at the foot of the cross, shaken by pain, woman, this is your son, pointing with the gaze of John, who at that moment embodied humanity, but the humanity transformed into a good disciple of Christ, the spiritualized humanity. 39. 
Also to John the first turned with the words, Son, this is your mother, words which I will now explain to you. 40. Mary embodied purity, obedience, faith, tenderness and humility. Each of these virtues is a rung of the ladder on which I came down to the world to become man in the womb of that holy and pure woman. 41. That tenderness, that purity and love are the divine womb in which the seed of life is fertilized. 42. That ladder on which I descended to you to become man and to dwell with my children is the same one I offer you to ascend on it to me, transforming yourselves from men into spirits of light. 43. Mary is the ladder, Mary is the maternal womb. Turn to her and you will meet me. 320, 68 to 73. 4. I left you Mary at the foot of the cross, on that hill that received my blood and the tears of my mother. There she remained in expectation of her children, for it will be she who takes the cross from their shoulders and shows them the way to heaven. 94, 73 45. The message of Mary was one of comfort, tender care, humility and hope. She had to come to earth to make known her maternal nature and offer her virgin womb, so that in it the word might become man. 46. But her mission did not end on earth. Beyond this world was her true home from which she could spread a mantle of compassion and care over all her children, from where she could follow the steps of the lost and pour out her heavenly comfort on the suffering. 47. Many centuries before Mary was to be born to fulfill a divine destiny, having become man in a woman, a prophet of God announced her. Through him you learned that a virgin would conceive and bear a son called Emmanuel, which means God with us. 48. In Mary, a woman without blemish, upon whom the spirit of heavenly mother love descended, the divine promise announced by the prophet was fulfilled. 49. Since then the world has known her, and men and people speak her name with love and in their pain they long for her as their mother. 50. You call her mother of sorrows because you know that the world thrust the sword of pain into her heart, and from your imaginary world there is not escaping that sorrowful face and that expression of infinite sorrow. 51. Today I want to tell you that you should remove from your hearts that everlasting image of pain and think instead of Mary as a kind smiling and loving mother who works spiritually and helps all her children to develop themselves on the path laid out by the Master. 52. Do you now realize that Mary's mission was not limited to motherhood on earth? Nor was her manifestation in the Second Age the only one, but a new epoch is reserved for her, in which she will speak to men from spirit to spirit. 53. My disciple John, a prophet and seer, saw in his rapture a woman clothed with the sun, a virgin, radiant with light. 54. This woman, this virgin, is Mary, who in her womb will no longer receive a new saviour, but a whole world of people who will nourish themselves in her with love, faith and humility to follow the divine footsteps of Christ, the master of all perfection. 55. The prophet saw how that woman suffered as if she were giving birth, but that pain was that of the purification of men, the atonement of spirit beings. When the pain is over, there will be light in the spirit beings, and joy will fill the spirit of your universal mother. 140, 44 to 52. The Divine Nature of Mary. 56. 
The mantle of your heavenly mother has given shadow to the world from eternity and lovingly protects my children, who are also yours. Mary as spirit was not born in the world, her maternal core of being has always been a part of me. 57. She is the wife of my purity, my holiness. She was my daughter when she became a woman and my mother when she received the incarnate word. 141, 63-64 58 Mary is divine in nature, her spirit is one with the Father and with the Son. Why judge her humanly, when she was the chosen daughter, announced to mankind from the beginning of time as the pure creature in whom the divine word would incarnate? 59. Why then does man blaspheme, doubting my power, and exploring my works without respect? The reason is that he has not delved into my divine teaching, has not thought about what the scriptures say, nor submitted himself to my will. 60. Today, in the third age, he also doubts that Mary is making herself known to men. But I tell you that she participates in all my works, because she is the embodiment of the most tender love that dwells in my divine spirit. 221, 4 to 6. 61. Mary is the spirit that is so fused with divinity that it forms one of its aspects, as represented by the three forms of revelation, the Father the Word and the Light of the Holy Spirit. In this sense, Mary is that Spirit of God who reveals and embodies the Divine Care. 352, 76 62 How many hope to reach the highest heaven to know Mary, whom they always imagine in the human form as the woman she was in the world, the Mother of the Incarnate Christ and whom they imagine as queen on a throne, beautiful and powerful. 63. But I say to you that you shall no longer give form to the divine in your mind. Mary, your spiritual mother, exists, but she has neither the form of a woman nor any other form. She is the holy and loving tenderness, whose mercy spreads out to infinity. She rules in the hearts, but her rule is that of humility, mercy and purity. But she has no throne, as men imagine. 64. She is beautiful, but of a beauty which you cannot even imagine with the most beautiful face. Her beauty is heavenly, and you will never be able to comprehend the heavenly. 263. 30. The Universal Charisma of Mary. 65. Mary, your Universal Mother, lives in me, and she gives the most tender caresses to her beloved children she has been in your hearts to leave in them her peace and the armament of a shrine. Mary watches over the world and spreads her wings like a lark over it, to protect it from one pole to another. 145,10. 66. In my divinity lives the intercessory love, it is Mary. How many hearts that had remained closed to faith have opened themselves through her to repentance and love. Her maternal being is present in all creation, she is felt by all, and yet some with a seeing eye deny her. 110, 62. 67. Those who deny the Divine Motherhood of Mary deny one of the most beautiful revelations that the Godhead has given to men. 68. Those who acknowledge the divinity of Christ and deny Mary do not know that they renounce the most tender and loving tray that exists in my divinity. 69. How many are there who believe to know the scriptures and yet know nothing because they have understood nothing? 
and how many are there who live in error despite their opinion that they have discovered the language of creation? 70. The maternal spirit is lovingly active in all beings, you can see his image everywhere. His divine mother love has fallen as a blessed seed into the hearts of all creatures, and every kingdom of nature is a living testimony of her and every mother's heart is an altar erected before that great love. Mary was a divine blossom, and the fruit was Jesus. 115,15-18